Welcome back to VCT Americas, where it took a map and a half, but 100 Thieves have come alive in this series with an utterly beautiful back half of Split to push us to a third and final map. Really great stuff out of 100 Thieves there. It felt like for the first time in this series, we were seeing our expectation of 100 Thieves. On that defensive side, the way that they played around the Cypher utility, the amount of looks that they managed to show on that defense, it was so much better. Sixteen, because it was this defensive half that we targeted for 100 Thieves to get it done. Here's that uh, re-clear that you mentioned in B that buys Asuna the space to eventually flank, even though one of his teammates goes down in this exchange. Yeah, they, we didn't get to see much of the defense on Ascent, but compare this to that, 100 Thieves was so much more proactive on this defensive side. Yeah, I think what they do really, really well when Asuna's in this raise role is he dictates the pace on this defensive half. You'll see very frequently him meeting up with Derek throughout this half, Derek dogging something out, and then following that trailblazer, looking for the first blood actively. And if it's not that, Derek's flashing for him. I often don't really see that when I see Cryo on the duelist role. I don't know if Austin is the one asking for these plays, mm -hmm. but the team looks so cohesive when he's in raise. They really do, and you see right at the end there as well, a, a lot of the value that this Cypher was providing, that can towards heaven shut down uh, really crew from ever going towards those B splits. They tried to, but constantly it would be this trap play with the raise nade, the suck from the Astra coming in as well. It was really good stuff out of them, but still crew showed some ability to come back, which we didn't see in their last series versus EG. They came up with new ideas on that attacking side and almost brought it back. Yeah, they had some incredible tenacity considering the set plays like that out of, um, out of 100 Thieves, right? Disallowing any approach towards heaven and basically routing all of that offensive pressure towards A, whether it's through mid or through A main. And yeah, crew did a good job of fighting through those defenses is not quite enough to get the dub in the end. Yeah, I think Sideshow actually said it on the cast that they had a lot of ideas. I actually really like the approach from Crew's attack half, but 100 Thieves had all the solutions for once, and they were having these defensive aggressions that finally paid off, and Bang showed up really big when they needed to him. On, the, on that heaven round, and then catching Kesna in spawn, instead of having Kesna get like three kills through that cloud burst. Yeah. He stopped at one, and that was a huge pivotal swing. With those setups from 100 Thieves and the, the amount of uh, sentinel utility they had with both the Sage and the Cypher, it meant the crew couldn't go for a lot of those hard hits that they really want to with that double duelist composition. So they had to play more into the mid round, playing through mid in so many of those moments. And sometimes the coordination got off. Davies on the raise was uh, first death so many times mm, on that attacking side. It wasn't the same kind of coordination that I think we saw from crew in the first map. Yeah, when it comes to the battle of the raises, it was Asuna who came out on top. You even heard uh, Brennan Josh starting to hypothesize, does this performance on Rays indicate that maybe he'll want to stick to that agent looking towards map three? We'll talk that in just a bit while we relish in the performance that he put up here on Split. Yeah, this was this is just gonna be him farming kills. And like I said, this is that round you were talking about where he gets on this flank on the bonus, immediately pops his ult. This is something Asuna has that I think a lot of players lack is just being in tune with the game, reacting immediately and understanding that he's one kill off of ult. The second he gets that kill, boom, immediately gonna pop ult. He already has the ideas that were built around him on the race that allowed him to thrive. And I agree with you. I think it might be that he's just very vocal in asking for those setups or that it's just I mean, the preparation, the set plays. I just like this look so much better. 339 ACS and 1.9 kills per round. He's I mean, nice. to, to be trading two lives for your own on, on average every single round. Yeah, more of that, please, from Asuna. And all of a sudden, 100 Thieves is sitting pretty here. Let's talk map three, though, because when we took a look at the map, Vito, Sean, the first thing I said was these first two maps look good for crew, 
but I feel like they have to get it done in two because I'm scared of their fracture. I, and you have a right to be. That last map against EG last week was a disaster. It was chaos. They did not know how to deal with the Sova, and it seemed like some of their hits just fell apart when they started to get pinged. They don't. They probably won't have to deal with that today, but I'm gonna say this. I don't think 100 Thieves should carry through their Sentinels comp that they had where Cry was on the jet. He was a bottom performer that game. Mm. He's, he's been struggling on it, and I don't like a solo jet on Fracture to begin with. I think going into maybe Asuna's Raze, Asuna's Neon, he's very good at these other duelists. We've seen that in the past as well. Last year, 2022, they were running both compositions with him on the Raze and on the Neon. I mean, you were obviously a part of the team when you guys were doing that, but there was a lot more variability, uh, and I loved when they did switch him onto that duelist role. Right, well, eagle-eyed viewers got a sneak peek at peek the crew there? composition. I saw three of the picks over that. the it shoulders like locked in. It looked like it was in. probably the same as what we saw last time with yeah. that fade yes. Raze, which really struggled. Kesnit was having a yeah. lot of trouble getting things going versus EG. Yeah, might not be too many surprises on the side of crew. The three that I did see were Breach, Fade, and Brimstone. The other two are still a mystery at this point. And then the whole of the 100 Thieves composition, right? But I definitely am curious how much 100 Thieves takes away from that crew loss just last week on Fracture, right? And crew has shown an incredible willingness to change things up and even return to maps. I know that this is the decider that we banned our way towards, but Crew has shown a willingness to go back to maps that they've previously yes. lost and have shown up in a big way. So that's something that shouldn't be ignored either. Yeah. They, they learn fast. That's a great point because something that I've noticed about Crew that I haven't noticed about 100 Thieves, they're, they're not afraid to keep the same comp. They might mm. have the same comp, but they will look very, very different. They are constantly evolving week to week. Whereas 100 Thieves, when they keep the same comp, a lot of the same things you'll see over and over. And we have this cryo on the jet again. It's just how are they gonna set him up? What are the hits gonna look like? Is he dashing out of drop into top site A? Is he dashing off site B to the right when he comes out of tree? How are they gonna utilize this jet? With the rays, you get a lot of value from the nades. With the neon, you get the stuns and space in. With this jet, it has to be fixated on Cryo as an individual performing at a top level. He has struggled thus far. If there was a map for him to show up and beat expectations that he's earned thus far this season, it would be here. Yeah, while we're holding down similar roles across all of the agents picked in, we do have three differences between each of the teams when it comes to the tools that they have to work with. Can Crew finally get into that win column? One map. Win is all it takes. Let's send it back over to our casters. Here's Brandon Sideshow for the call. Thank you very much, guys. Yep, let's get to it. And this is a massive, massive final map that we find ourselves in here. For 100 Thieves, getting over that hurdle, trying to find that extra win in their column. And for Crew, trying to find their first one in the America split. It all gets decided right here, right now. And I don't know how this map is going to end up. Yeah. Neither of the teams have made compositional changes. And 100 Thieves have looked really lost on their attack sides of both of the maps that we've seen so far. That doesn't mean it's necessarily going to happen here, but I'm seeing them start out on defense side Fracture, and I think this might be where they need to start racking up some rounds. And I am looking towards Cryo and Asana, and I think those players, because you expect the Jet to be able to have big performances, and because Asana just dropped an insane performance on Split, both of them playing over towards a halls to start this out, but that is not where crew are trying to go whatsoever. Let's see how this plays out. Not too much attention to the north side there. That's a trailblazer. Clears the way, gets rid of a trip. Aftershock as well as aggression. It's the name of the game, but it looks like crew want to try and meet them pound for pound as well. The entirety of their team stun off to the side. To disengage this ever so slightly. There's no threat of a push that's coming through. Nade over the top as well as that, a flash as well. It's not going to be broken in time, and this deep aggressive push is just being dismantled. That Great is, answer by Crew. That is a crazy good nade by Kesnit. It lands perfectly in the middle of all of the 100 Thieves players, cutting off their retreat, and only Cryo managed to get around it. Cryo split from the other two. Derek and Asana just left to die. Nothing they could do against horns, flashes, and the entirety of Crew barreling towards them. Now, Crew, however, are still looking to end B, and Stellar and Bang. They're healthy. They're over here. This seems strange to me. They wow. know that there's still a Killjoy. Surely they were set up on the other side. On well, the players are weak enough, Josh, to... It's gonna be hard, I think, even still with that massive player left. advantage. Pushing through, bang with two, and guess what? Weak enough at the end of the day Spike with the one-two punch. Beat. Good swing timing. Placing sentry. Left up to Nags. Uh, broken. Picks up the spike, but time 
is against him. 13 seconds with the tap of it. No easy shot found. Oh my goodness! Lovely attempt by Nags, but eventually it was there. It was secured. So 100 Thieves with a pistol. It was a rocky beginning, Josh. Rocky. Uh, Bang and Stella do an incredible job there, hitting some nasty good headshots with their classics, I think it was. But Left. I just don't understand the move from Crew particularly. They there knew that there was a three-player push-out A main. Are you telling me they really think that Killjoy was also A? I, they must have known that they were going into a difficult area of the map and just chose to do it due to its unpredictability. But that grants 100 Thieves their second pistol win of the series so far. And some early momentum. Stun and a stimmy just to see what it can get done there towards B main. As well as that looking like they want to crunch this because of the trailblazer, Nags out in the open. The fact that Nags is positioned there tells me that I don't think they've watched too many 100 Thieves Fracture VODs. 100 Thieves on Fracture were running south side crunches all the time in their previous game. This is crazy though. I mean, look at crew. Caterpillar all the way through. Looks like they wanted to try and go into spawn here. Do they still think that's the case? Okay, they were testing it for a better moment. There was a nade to push them back and a re-clear into sand off the back of the flash, but they got to know now. They're being chased, they're being corralled right into the corner. Taking a fight to it, Kesnit. He gets his one, but eventually done. And there you go, okay. Clean enough, four players surviving. So 100 Thieves have to carry a lot of these guns forwards now into that bonus round. Economy. A good space, good spot. And like I said, 100 Thieves, one of the big themes the last time we saw them play on Fracture Defense. against Sentinels, they were crunching south side repeatedly. It's a weird strategy. We don't see other teams really doing it that often. And we've seen Fnatic do it occasionally with big alts on board, but 100 Thieves were doing it over and over and over again. And it helped propel their defensive side to a reasonable level of success. Bang just decides to swing that Okay, one. early fight taken. No time wasted again. Except the Nana Swarm gonna be stopping them, slowing them down. This time, Max's position is a little bit safer. Uh, off to the corner, he doesn't take the rope. He hears all those players pushing him, yet takes the fight anyway. Don't understand it, but it's more defensive aggression that works out beautifully for 100 Thieves. They've got themselves into a 4v4. They know that crew have taken this area. Very obvious where they're going to be at. But that doesn't mean that you can necessarily beat them. I love this reflank by Melza, by the way. He's in the tunnel, coming up around and behind the 100 Thieves squad. The attempt is there, fight to be taken towards it. And guess what? Oh my goodness, Asana. Caught lacking. It was like a horror movie. <laughs> it really was. He turned, there was nothing he could do, but crew win it out, okay. Crew with a nice reaction, and I think you think about the way that Fracture works. If 100 Thieves are going to be always aggressive on the defense side, no matter where they're pushing, I mean, south side, out through dish, whatever it is, crew need to react quickly. Yep. That's actually one of the big strengths that we saw from them on their attack side of split. They are decisive. They're going to go. Kesnit, no fear, into a site. So 100 Thieves are probably going to be ended up playing a lot of retake situations if they come with that level of aggression still. And I think Nags needs to get familiar with the ropes too. <laughs> Instead of challenging like he was. This is another round very quick from Crew. I play a little bit safer. Launching smoke. You can see it, it's explosive at the beginning, but not afraid to slow it down again. The Trailblazer has indicated that they pushed out a main here. It caught a trip, so Nags knows that they are pushing. What does Crew do? I must wait a Do moment. they go back and re-clear those players from spawn? They are grouping up. It looks like it. Yeah. Minute 10 on the clock, so. Lots of time now, but making sure that there's discipline at play, at work, all the corners cleared. Now is being left as well in our four position. Prowler. Oh, and they've just pushed Derek back away now. So 100 Thieves don't have very good information. In A halls, they send another flash. Oh, and the... the Sky guy. flash. Yeah, that's interesting. It actually didn't go deep into holes, but they still read that it's a B hit coming through. Can they get here in time? Didn't tag anything, and still the Nana Swarm setup was there. Activated in time. It slowed it down with 30 seconds. Dash forwards is a flash on top of it. But it right into the crossfire once more. Stella, not wasting any time. He's already working around. Asana, he's still alive, though. 1v2 could come down to that. Kesnitz on four health. Low enough in that 1v2 that Asana... Put into this position, but I love this reposition by Melza. He's taken up control of Arcade, close to Dice. There's too much to clear. 
How does it get done? And it's off angle. Slide off angle. Bingo. Initial shot being missed there, but Melzer, he salvages it. I think Melzer's playing these situations beautifully. The, the reflect through tunnel in the previous round, excellent. He actually holds tunnel once again for them that time, allowing them to get back over to B. And then he's always proactive in the post plan, getting into a nice spot. One of the big advantages of Brim. I think Cruz attack side calling looks significantly better than we've seen from them in the past. I've really liked what they've brought out. We didn't get yeah. to see too much of it on Ascent, but they're splitting so far on Fracture. I've been impressed with it. Very reactive off the right elements. Never attempt here. Deep push. And always with a Trailblazer, there's a player accompanying it. When 100 Thieves do these deep pushes, of course, the knives in the hands of Cryo. He was hunting, hoping that somebody's in his crosshair, in his sight line. There it is. Jumping wide, he still had to dash and able, of course, to get out of there and evacuate. So, get that tag off. Prowler's going to be spotting it. Does Cryo want to try and take another fight here? One player spotted. Updraft just to dodge to the side there. Smoke in his face as well. Opportunities for Crew to make the most of it. And guess what? Klaus is just playing full on aggression. Taking a fight to them. Beautiful fade on as well. That nightfall. I believe catches on to at least three of the players, so... And it also means that they can't hear the plant going down, so if 100 Thieves had wanted to try to commit the uh, Breach Ult or the Brim Ult to try and stop that, they're really lacking the info to do so. The post plant positioning of crew is really quite good on top of that. Control of the arcade through a main as well. Close corner and tower. Whoa! Oh, committed by Crew. Davies wants to take the fight. That's also a massive win for 100 Thieves. Just getting that out is huge. Dragon the ultimate out. Klaus is up close inside the smoke. One enemy oh, it's dangerous, but that's not low enough. Noted with the positioning. And it's Klaus who's just going for the confidence peak. I think Davies is a bit early on the trigger there. This is round five, an anti-eco for crew in a 4v4 where their post plan positioning is good. They controlled B main, they controlled arcade, they had good crossfire setup and still chose to invest the breach ultimate. Yeah. Uh, the reason that that might have repercussions is because look at what 100 Thieves have got on board. I mean, they've got a lockdown that at the moment Melzer doesn't have an answer for, though he probably will later on. But just the way that they can deny the plant from happening with Derek and Bang's ultimates, is, it's going to be enormously favored towards 100 Thieves here, as long as they don't lose this initial fight that looks heavy at tree. Start off to the side, what a shot! Oh my goodness. He couldn't take the early line. The fault line pushed him out of that position. Brimolt into Sands, possibly off the door, just opening, hoping that they could catch a player, but it does relieve that stress. Also Seekers right behind them. Even the Rolling Thunder, every ult's being committed here, including their own Brimolt. It's an orbital strike as well to push back aggression on aggression. No casualties on either side, apart from the initial fight being taken, but they're together. Ask someone to take the fight. Off to the side, three in the round. Racking them up. And the aggression from 100 Thieves on their defensive side, paired with good ultimate usage. That orbital strike stopped them from taking Sands. It pinned crew into halls and allowed them to be crunched. Everybody surrounded. And then, 100 Thieves playing very tight with each other. Asana able to trade, work off the flashes. It feels like when, there's, when there is that level of aggression from 100 Thieves, actually it makes the timings easier for them to play around each other. Yeah. And maybe that's been the big thing that's lacking from Cryo sometimes that makes their attack sides left. difficult. Can't let us get too expensive, though, because you don't have money to burn. No, they do not. That's already too many rifles taken away. And the crew's bankroll looks great here. There's, of course, no chance really for Nags to win the round. He doesn't control the spike. A couple of selfies with the cam, but no. Ten Nags. seconds left. <laughs> Just got to save here. But he's done his job. Taking two guns away is quite nice for crew. Lose the round, but listen, in the long term, I wonder what the 100 Thieves economy is going to be looking like. Look at how well Asen is playing around this, though. The, the second player there had flashed just really, really tight up with Derek. Trying not to stack on top of each other so that they don't get sprayed down, but, yeah. but tight enough so that they can get trades, control the aggression. It's one of the core strengths that we were, you know, singing the praises of 100 Thieves as well, heading into the Americas. It's always been that fundamentals playing off each other incredibly well that's 
Now sailed yeah. them through a lot of rounds, making sure that they were very disciplined. And that's one of the things that they've kind of earned back as well towards the tail end of that split map. Mark one. Nice stun. That's going to be pushing them back. Horn was dealt with on top of that, so reveal it for about a moment. This is one of the first rounds where we're not seeing aggression coming Keeps out from 100 team. teams, but the deep trailblazer still makes it feel like there's that aggression in halls. So Asen is faking like he's taken tons of room and might be pushing into spawn. It's only him there. That's that prior conditioning. And, and there's the value. They're forced to go towards a different area of the map. They don't expect the jet to be there, and Cryo finds a pick. Nice. Flash to accompany that kill onto Melza. Playing off the util nicely. It's crews left scrambling. Two of their players left towards the north side. They still have the spike in their hands, but what options do they really have? Because all of that positioning, look at this. Close corner for Bang. He's going to be making sure that this area is watched for. The only thing crew can do is contact push through. They might have heard that drop, though. Could have been close enough for it, so. But is there enough time, really? 30 here? seconds left. If they're trying to slow walk the entire way up, uh, they're going to have to do it through a smoke. Uh, at this point, it's just a save. The awareness of Bang is quite good here. Just. Dropping the smoke in their faces. Yeah. So 100 Thieves are going to get another round here with Cryo finding that first kill. If you think back to Ascent and how much of a jet diff there was left. between Kesnit's aggression and Cryo on defense, I mean, it, it was night and day, the difference between them. Here, map three, that's the third round in a row where Cryo has gotten the first kill, and every time it's been on to Kesnit. So, sure, Kesnit's not playing the jet here, but it's just the tides have turned massively. Absolutely. Stella still with that lockdown as well. That's going to be a critical component to any sort of successful retake, especially when Melza doesn't have that ult of his own. I mean, the orbital strike, you remember back in that round where just the entire kitchen sink of ultimates was being thrown by 100 Thieves. That was when crew ended up using their own orbital strike to try and salvage the round. They don't have that big tool now to break that. More aggression. Look at it. Over towards A. Oh, uh, sorry. Over towards Tree. But it's just to get Cryo on a deep line. Yeah. Where is Bang going? All right. Feels confident enough to just pick up the alt orb. So the smoke being watched there by the op angle. What's the team contacting? They threw. Double Satchel now trying to squeeze them through into sand. Just so making sure nobody can really push them over towards that heaven angle. And there's a the lockdown. What's the answer? Aftershock, but that's not going to kill it unless there's something else accompanying it. That's uh, okay. A bit missing. Stun connects. Time running down, running really low, and it's a flood attempt to this retake. 100 Thieves. There's a flank from drop now. It's Klaus who has to be that difference maker. Stops the defuse. Can he get a second? He can indeed. Doesn't opt to survive. Wants to take the fight to them. Updraft tagging them down. Pushing forward in the smoke with the shorties in their hands. Angle watch. Nobody can stick this spike with the. And Molly just at their feet, but there is a bit more utility to try and work through. Double fight taken, bang! Great angle. It's offset enough that he can just beam down the players as they're wide swinging. A, definitely a different flavor now that Cryo has his operator online. Right? There's less of the aggression coming through from 100 Thieves yeah. and more of them early round getting Cryo posted, but they're using the conditioning from earlier in the half so the cryo's uncontested and can get onto deep lines. It's a very nicely thought out defensive half. And it makes me think about maybe 100 Thieves defense on Ascent would have been decent had they not been at such an enormous deficit. Is this just a team that is great on one half on every map? We'll see. Smoke onto the side there with a dash active. Ryan wants to try and take an early fight. That's the back away, but guess what? Their coverage is there once more. So Rolling Thunder doesn't get anything. Nobody playing deep onto the site here. So Crew just investing the resources to try and get onto the site. But the alarm bot triggered. This isn't a good time for the Nana Swarmers, but the spike is going to start to get planted here. But all this space once more taken. Just eight up here. Asana moving forwards. That's just a bit of spamming. I mean, where are these kills coming from? Seemingly nowhere. Derek collecting onto two. But it's a 2v4. Spike is down. A lot could happen, but not when Bang is managing all the angles. Aftershock into the corner. Melter, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Push back. And a very nice retake. 
crew have no way of dealing with 100 Thieves right now. The, the retake comes from every single direction. Two players holding generator, holding canteen, making sure the crew don't push there. Then a deep flank. Uh, all of this space taken by Derek and Asner here. And Derek is looking great with it. The kill on Davies is perfect to avoid any disaster happening. But that retake came through from everywhere. And also, that was Kesnit's fourth first death of the half. He's not getting the same value. Nowhere near. It was firing on all cylinders. Listen, map one, maybe a bit of map two as well. But the confidence, it was just running it down. His team had his back most circumstances, even if he went down. But you're starting to see it slip a little bit now with all these first deaths piling up. Yeah, it's about limit testing. Like we said on map one, Kesnit is going to try to push the limits. And to be honest, we've seen in their previous games that when Kesnit hits the limit, he just tries to bully his way through it anyway. He doesn't try to back off and give respect to his opponents. He's going to just try to hard carry even harder. Yeah. And that, when a team has a good read on it, is a very poor approach. However, it does mean that he's just going to stomp teams that have a bad read on it. And that's that's where you get the, the dichotomy of Kesnit. The hot or cold, sometimes overconfidence, paying the price, but... 100 Thieves, this is a lead that they are accruing and plenty more opportunities at that. But that was what the timeout was for from Crew, just to try and put a stop to it. Probably won't be this round though, because the guns are not looking too hot. There. A lot of ults are there working their way towards though, Josh. Yeah, it's possible, but it, it comes down to whether Crew can actually find that first pick. Whoa, both players lit up. Asner and Bang. Flash with the horn, so nobody could break it. Look at that, all the way, just creeping, crawling up into tower. Kesner's managed to work his way in here. There was an orbital strike that was used. Split up the site. The Kesner is separated. Rocket to the side, but Cryer's got the dash. Disengages. Doesn't get anything. In fact, the shot did land. Yeah, it was a leg shot. Yeah, even out on the wall bang, but Kesner dropped down to five half. And oh! Okay. Cryo has had enough of the doubters, had enough of the haters. Guy's looking unleashed right now. Molly at his feet, Aftershock on top of it. Colin enough player position, but Davies cannot withstand it. But this flank attempt by Nagset, look at Bang. He's there to respond. Seals up any gaps in the play, a wider swing, but it's perfectly timed for the canteen push. Watch for on the angle, and a shot managed and hit still. 100 Thieves find their seventh. Crew are gonna have guns in the next round. Crew are gonna have ults in the next round too. Derek's death. Gives him the rolling thunder, though. So 100 Thieves have tools with which to respond. And thus far, Crew have just not really been able to, to, to get their value. Uh, Kesnick yeah, okay. falls once again. Cryo's fifth first kill of the map and the fourth one onto Kesnick. I mean, Cryo is everything right now in terms of these early duels. Let's make some chaos. Back in control, feels like he's in prime form okay. currently. Shots he's been hitting. And as the trailblazer comes out, Nags, he takes the rope, disappears. And what conditioning 100 Thieves have put forwards here where the trailblazer feels like there's somebody behind it every time. Yeah. But for the last, I mean, we can tell for the last like four rounds, it's just been Arsenal on his own. But the threat remains just from that prior conditioning. Cryo has been opping on top of the Killjoy utility this round just to give a different flavor to it. It's not optimal, but they're just trying to mass mess up the defensive um, systems as much as possible so that crew don't have a read. Face your what fear. that's done, though, is leave the B site open. So crew, for the first time, might actually get in a good spot. They're going to fight as fast. It's a rolling thunder by 100 Thieves. Trying to take the fight to them. The orbital strike. Where is the follow-up here? Kislik dies again first. Completely out in the open. Nax, maybe he can be the man of the hour. Maybe he can put a stop to this one. Holding that position down towards Arcade. It's got to be that extra element, but time is running low, and all that util has stopped them from scaling through to that main angle. They know it's been compromised. Bang is wondering where these players left. could be. Hopped up onto dice. Angles there! And yeah, well, okay. Was watched for. Didn't assume it was going to be swung from that angle. Crew barreling the way through. This time, it's brute force. At least that's what it feels like. Spike it was a great it. trade by Melzer, though. Fantastic play from him again. And the spotted. stun is good. Yeah, but the jump peak spotted Last out. Player standing. 
Left up to Cryo, Operator in the retake. Not the most applicable tool for the job. Quick scope. Smoke down at his feet. Doesn't opt to pick up a rifle. And the Seize tells him that he's gotten ahead of where they think he is. Clearing carefully. Opportunities here for another kill. Creeping forward, Shorty out. He knows it's another one. Can't claim it. The pallet's just not landing. Almost grabbing a three-piece. Last round before the switch. Respect for the vision there. 11 HP. Crew a little lucky to survive, but quite a well-played round by them, to be honest. Despite losing Kesnit early, Nags does a great job to be able to grab all of that space and find the kill onto the player dice and give info for Melza to swing. If Crew can get another, it starts to look like a very reasonable half, despite the dominant game plan from 100 Thieves. 7-5 yeah, will not be hurting too much. Rapid, isn't it? Four players barreling up towards drop. The alarm bot's broken, though, so... And no blast packs for Kesnit here, so he's really lacking that ability to break crosshair placement and explosively get into the site. They're just trying to fake. You look at the positioning of Nags, and it seems like this is supposed to be a B-split. They're trying to pull Cryo's rotate, seeing if they get any information about a trailblazer on the other side of the map. He is so content to hold an aggressive angle in main, though, and stun. Actually catching on to a teammate there, Klaus couldn't really move forwards with it, but a lot of noise being made, still a minute in the round though. Cryo doesn't need to rotate here because he can use his Blade right Storm for the retake. He doesn't have to worry about having that operator. Is this... Wow, it's going to end up back on A. Have Crew overcooked it? 45 left. And setup is there with the Killjoy. There's only the Killjoy on site. They haven't broken it. Nags might easily die here to Cryo though, unless he's very late. What a jiggle! Knives out. Does he want to try and take the fight to him? Realize he's being squeezed before players dropping down, and Asana is here. Try and relieve some of that pressure. Spraying through, shot lands. That's the side, does not matter. A smidge. It's Cryo. Making sure he can collect up all the remnants, any sort of players that were standing there. And now he's with 15 seconds left. Stunned up, spike out in the open. No man's land. 10 seconds left. The only choice here to try and run the timing is missed, but it matters not. Look at that. Cryo is looking like he is in prime form. And it all comes Switching down sides. to them having a game plan where he understands his place within the system. Seriously, what a difference it makes. Seeing this team on the defense side of Split and Fracture, when they have these solid ideas about what they want to do and where people should be, the player's individual quality returns to what we expect from them. Pieces. Really coming together here for 100 Thieves. That is going to do it for the first half of this one. Let's send it down to the desk to break it all down. Thank you so much, Brent. 100 Thieves looking to steal this one away with an 8-4 opening half here on Fracture. I mean, in a number of ways, we are seeing what our concerns were for crew being borne out. But we're also seeing another element, another gear of 100 Thieves this team seems to have unlocked here in the final map. Josh put it perfectly. When this team has a solid game plan, the players form around it so well. And to talk of the game plan, a lot of that was built around these like heavy south side fights. They were doing this in the last game versus Sentinels, focusing on getting that space, getting all Torbs to retake this one. And on top of that, when they did go into these retakes, they often had the alts online. This is a different round, though, where one of the moments where crew managed to find some value themselves themselves because they kept that game fairly close considering that much better look from to come out for this 100 Thieves squad. And that is such a big difference from what we've been seeing from them thus far. And now as we get ready for this attacking side as well, in the past, Crew has somewhat struggled with this, with this Kesnit uh, single duelist composition. Their retakes were really rough against CG. Yeah, he's, uh, he's awoken from his cryogenic slumber to find those first kills all across the board, which is 20 seconds left to go before we dive into the second half. I think it's all gonna come down to whether or not Crew can find a way to contain 
this absolute monster on the other side that has, seems to have been awoken here in our third and final map. Either way, it's do or die time for both of our squads as they look to climb our leaderboard. Back over to Bren and Sideshow to close it out. A prime focus. All of our attention going to be placed onto this pistol round, isn't it? Round 13, so important. 100 Thieves have been scraping a couple of them together now as we enter the tail end of this series here, Josh. But it is important for them because it's the attack side where we've seen 100 Thieves struggle. They've got a sizable lead. It's about holding on to it. Yeah, despite even winning split, their attack side did look a little clueless. And on Ascent, it was nothing short of abysmal. Crew with a push down A halls here. Aggression from both sides. As 100 Thieves work their way towards B, are these kill trips? It looks like it. Is Nags gonna get an angle through the smoke? They found my wire. One broken. Yeah, one still remaining though at dice. Plant's gonna start to go down. No util to stop this one, but this flank is gonna be so important towards B main. It's Kesnit made to lead the charge. Cleans out the positioning here, and it does remove that one avenue to play the post plant from. Everybody grouped up now towards, but there is a reflanking tunnel. That's Derek later. He's gonna be. The backstab, extra element maybe to try and salvage this round. If it does get messy, if it does get hairy, and it might just do that one for one now. In terms of the kills, with Melza falling, Util's now starting to tap onto the spike. Klaus is sticking this one. There needs to be a kill. He's got half already, and this is dangerous. Still lining up Asana. The smoke dissipates, and they do shut it down. The post plant idea from 100 day. Thieves is a lot better than what we've seen so far on their attack sides. It wasn't just Eric that was going for that reflank, it was actually Bang as well. So they sent two players from Arcade underneath Tunnel to get back control of stairs. And just that understanding of the important positions on B to fight for in the post plant, that's the kind of thing that can net you wins. Just, just a... Here a team level intelligence that we need to be fighting over these areas. These are the important spots. I'm surprised the amount of teams that really do let that slip. They're trying to play Fracture. Here we go, reclearance. It was Util being used prior. Oh, goodness me, Cryo. Spike down A. Hey, a ton of damage. Dash to disengage there, but still. 100 Thieves who find themselves in a 4v5. Okay. It's a lot of counter spam. Yeah. There's four players set up here. Stella may be able to find a pick. This smoke is going to go down at some point. Klaus is going to be left. <laughs> yeah, completely out in the open. Close to the box. Oh my. Yeah, okay. Well, all the positions. Make sure to spam it out as the smoke drops down. Just expecting, they just know. Uh, this is a comical round, really, because there's so many different threats in a lot of different angles, and 100 Thieves very diligent at clearing them all. Bang, now only two away from getting his orbital strike online. I mean, this is... In round 14, he's going to get the plan. Yeah, a showcase, I think, as well, but... 100 Thieves are not flustered right now, Josh. If they're spending time in the mid round there to farm orbs, I mean, before they even get the plant down, yep. they're not worried about being pressured. They're not worried at all about losing the round in that state. It's all about min maxing, making yep. sure that they can farm up those ultimates. That is the sign of a team that is firmly in control. Yes, absolutely. I mean, sometimes that can be a case of running before you can walk, but actually what we've seen from 100 Thieves on this map Down. leads me to think that they're pretty confident that this went to three here. And now Bang is one away from that huge ultimate. And there is no lockdown on the other side, right? Crew are not playing a Killjoy, so he doesn't have to worry about that. He can use it for all sorts of offensive uh, capabilities on the site. Flash to push them back, and yeah, the orb is just being farmed up. So bang now. Orbital strike. Got that one available. And there's so many good places for it. Yeah. You can use it to clear tower. You can use it to stop a retake from coming through. You can use it, you know, on the common A anchor positions towards generator. There's just the world is your oyster with this ult if there's no lockdown on the other side. Repush through A main for crew. That's gonna be spotted by the turret, I believe. So now Stella's aware of it and the look. Scampering away, crew not willing to take that fight straight to them and all that space that was gained as well on the other side, 100 Thieves. Strange decision by crew though, because that means that they're all going to be retaking through spawn. I don't like that approach. Never ideal. Gotta be trying to threaten multiple angles when you are trying to play that retake. All oh, that utility though, oh my goodness, yeah. 
That's a kill foul and with the rifle. Because they will be trying to get back to that previous form that he showcased in map number one. Here. And he has the ult online too, showstopper. Left. Devastating if 100 Thieves tried to go for, for the plant again. But the stun, the nade, all comboed up. The spam as well. This is quite precarious because Here. you're down to Here. 15 seconds left. Blinded. What's the call to be made? I'm gonna try and go for the win. Stunned I across through, but the spike has to be planted. Left. Fight not won. Nade as well, re earns from that prior kill. Spray through Spike into Jenny. Not winnable now for Derek. Just trying to do as much damage as possible, but he spotted with the camp. Spammed out. And four for Kesnit. What a round to come online. A very rough first half. And that will give more of the you know idea that he's doing the right stuff. That he's in the right place. He's got a good read on what 100 Thieves are going for. And with Bang, I believe, being the first death on the side of 100 Thieves, looking to try and get the plant down, despite the fact he already had his ult up. Uh, that, that just took out all the sting. I mean, they were farming ult orbs all around the map for an ult that just disappeared instantly. This is still a big round for them. So we'll see whether Bang has any ideas about what he wants to do this time. Very oh. fast aggression. Kesnit on this angle where you can spot people deep, deep in spawn looking to try and take hauls. I believe that Molly was probably going to be landing on the backside of tower, but as soon this as that crazy. pressure was applied, it's a fight! One out, 100 Thieves, the victors. Player advantage found for them. Keep it a discipline tight when it comes to taking a lot of these fights. And also Cryo finding that first pick. I mean, that just helps the situation enormously because the trade comes through, you go two for one instead of one for two. They're now in a 4v3 scenario where crew control very little of the map. They've got Cypher Utility over towards A, so I kind of like the reposition from Nags if it was going to go that way, but it just isn't. This is a massive fight at Arkham. Gun barrel sticking out, and Stella's not watching for it. Yeah, this was a big risk taken by Crew. Oh, my. What a strike. Close to the corner. That is quite perfect. Couldn't tuck himself close to the corner. He was taking even more damage. Stun now. Gotta know that Davies is around this area, surely. Flash, repeat jump spot as well. Doesn't see him, but he is dealt with, and Nags... Final line of defense, not for much longer. Going to be forced to play that retake. Lone player standing, but guess what? Bang, ready to respond. Good trade, threat neutralized. A crew are playing still quite proactively on their defense side. We saw pushes happening all over the place, but 100 Thieves are reading it. For example, the aggression coming out from Tree there, that means that you need to re-clear that by pushing under the tunnel. And that's exactly what 100 Thieves do. They win out that scenario. Uh, Nags is flanking through Dish. They're aware that it's a possibility, and they deal with it. It all looks drilled at the moment from 100 Thieves. They're two rounds away from being able to win this series. But remember that this is a must-win game for both teams if they want any chance of being able to make it to playoffs. And looking at 100 Thieves' strength of schedule coming up, not only do they need this win, guaranteed against Crew, they also need to upset one of the top four teams in America's. Things do not get any easier. And if you're a 100 Thieves fan or hopeful, you would have been, you would have been wanting them to crush this game. And it... The first two maps have not been like that at all, back and forth. But listen, playing to the strength of the map pool for crew as well, I will say. Absolutely. And 100 split teams, being picked. 100 teams demonstrating some serious improvements on their defense side split and overall on Fracture. That's where the difference is manifested. 11 to 5. Lead still gained and held for 100 Thieves in two rounds. That's what separates them from closing out this series. Creeping up to the, the standings as well. An opportunity looking forward to playoffs. Still approaching that middle section as we're in this super week in week four. But crew as well are going to be thinking, man, we'll try and come back into this some way, some form, because this is going to be one of your easier matches that you've got coming up as well for this team. And they're not out of it just yet. It is a massive deficit, obviously. And this is really patient, isn't it? Oh, the peak with the dog. The crosshair placement just marvelous there. Yeah. Oh, I was so aware. Horn spots him out. Standing the ground though, but this is Nags. I've got Attempts your trail. made. Seeker's going to be used as well. Push forwards. Bang's just happy to swing. Happy to take the fight. And Melton misses the shot. He tried to follow up at least to try and take down Bang, but 
can't yeah. quite manage it. And now he's being squeezed from every possible angle. He can hear them running this gotcha. way, that way. Stella will fall, though. Any more opportunities for a fight to be taken? Not quite spammed out. Close! Close! Last player Three for it. He Spike might have just salvaged B. it. Lift it to that one-on-one. -on -one. Davies with a flash. He can just wait for the plant. Spike's not picked up. Here's the footsteps. Here's the guiding light. This all gives Davies info. Is he really going to try and swing that? He did. 30 seconds Davies left. Davies was looking to try and cut Asner off before he could get to sight. And now with 25 seconds, Asner has no idea no. where this player is. He does not know. No idea. Davies in this position right now. He's thinking, has he ran all the way to A? But now that guy in light popped off. He didn't hear it. Too Wait. far away. So he's none the wiser. Is Asner really going to be able to get this plant off? There's no Ten way. 10 seconds left. I think the flash ended up potentially baiting Davies into actually pushing over towards A, but now it's given that free plant off Asana in position. And now the table's turned, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, Davies now does not really understand where Asana could have repositioned to. Could be RK, could be back in B main. And they could be anywhere. A lot of util. Might just be tucked on sight. Davies wants to keep his gun out in this scenario. He doesn't want to be caught with any of that utility out in his hands. He could have been using it to clear these corners, but instead just contacting all the way yet. up and he's tapped it. Spikes there. Blinded. Flash round, that was deep towards tower and he heard the fire as well. So he knows that Davies wasn't sticking this one now, but he has to. This is the percentage play, half on it, sticking it all the way through and the timing is just there, Asana. Game sense, masterful placement with his positioning and that is gonna be hurt. 100 Thieves now, one step away from closing out the series. It's a crazy good play by Klaus, but my word, Asana plays the clutch beautifully after he gets the plant down. And those kind of rounds, the crew needs those to mount any kind of comeback here. And instead, 100 Thieves, they're excellent on show. Asana after an insane performance on split, looking to win this out, Kesnik it with so much aggression. And this is risky. He's forced to make the plays. Flash to a company, two players, four crew are left scrambling. What answers can they find? Seems like little. This is a return of fire, the money's not good. I mean, look at what Mags is working with. Trailblazer, that's a stun. It's caught him. Flash as well, has to turn it. One player left standing and it's Nags. You should run. It's all but over. The lockdown, pushing him back, Nags. What can he even do here? A wide swing from confidence. That's Stella to close. And 100 Thieves in a dominant fashion from at number three, a well-earned series. Closer than they would have liked, I'm sure. But what a bounce back. The last three halves of this series were so beautifully played by 100 team. Thieves. It really did. Team. It felt like a different team. The defense side of split. The way that Arsenal just exploded on Rays, and then Cryo back to peak Cryo form, weaved into their game plan entirely on Fracture. The aggression, the conditioning, the oping, it all came together. And it gave us a look, I think, at what this squad could be. Yeah, that peak potential maybe just really rearing his head, you know. We have high expectations as a 100 Thieves squad with the talent that they've got. Because they've demonstrated it in the past. Absolutely. It's not some, it's not some baseless faith. We've seen demonstrations of it before. They've been deep in tournaments. They've been the representatives of North America at these uh, international events. 100 Thieves schedule does not get easier. They are facing some incredibly difficult opponents coming up. Leviathan, NRG, all of the Brazilian teams. That's what's next for this 100 Thieves squad. But if they can get to their skill ceiling and avoid the skill floor more often, maybe there's a comeback still on the cards. Yeah. Sky's the limit, potentially. Making playoffs, that's going to be the goal for them. And then an opposition this time around, crew. It's a desperate attempt from them. Almost able to do it, but listen, still continuing winless in the America split. And we heard from Davies earlier about how much that first win would really mean to them. And they can look back over the last couple of games and it'll be heartbreak. It'll be bitter, bitter disappointment for crew. 
because they let the game against EG slip away from them, and I think they let the game right here slip away from them too. They had the ability to close out split, but they just couldn't find the answers to what 100 Thieves were throwing at them. They didn't expect that level of aggression and, and talent from Asana, I think. And then they had no answers, to yeah. be honest, on Fracture. No answers, but signs of life towards the end of that series. 400 Thieves, and they earn a win to try and claw their way back into that standings as well. But enough from us. Let's send it back down to Dash and the desk with a very special guest. Thank you so much, uh, Bren. It was a slog, but what a comeback mounted here by 100 Thieves to get another W onto the board and dominance on Fracture as we're joined by DDK, general manager of 100 Thieves. How's the blood pressure? Quick blood pressure check. <laughs> I'm still alive, so that's good. That's a good sign. Yeah, your, yeah. Doc, your doctor might have some opinions about uh, sitting Scary. on the sidelines for these matchups. Um, overall, what was your assessment just straight off the rip coming into this matchup in terms of the stakes, the importance for 100 Thieves against Crew, considering we're moving towards that halfway point of the, of the season? Yeah, I think uh, this Super Week is a huge inflection point based on just some of the results that we've had have been, I think, disappointing for the whole team. I think we we feel like we can we can do a lot better. I think we should have done a lot better, and and that's the sentiment. So, uh, with the with the record being as it is, and not really having time to correct, because once you get into Super Week, it's match after match after match. So you don't really have time to fix stuff. So this had to be a confidence building first game, and it would have been the opposite if we would have lost the crew because you know, crew is a good team but again you know they're, they're one of the teams that are lower in the league at the moment there's a lot stronger opponents that we're thinking about so it would have really knocked the confidence so this is a super important win to set us up now we had some opinions obviously on the outside about what maybe needed to change coming into today's series what were the identifications in the 100 thieves camp about like what what parts of the game were falling short and and what did you guys work on in this week of practice specifically yeah, there's definitely some experimentation with with some comps. Obviously, we didn't see any of that here today. Uh, but I think a lot of it is is down to fundamentals and figuring out where we need to correct in terms of not necessarily building new things, but making sure you know what, why are we seeing certain mistakes happen that maybe we've gone over before. So you know, retaining some information, making sure that when we have certain let's say issues, like there are certain issues like retakes, or what, that there will be the the protocols that are in place. But ultimately, it, it's, it's a lot of confidence too. Um, and I think the team has, there's a lot of pressure when you play with 100 Thieves. There's an org with a lot of expectations. And you know, we've got you know, Cry Out here who has jumped in, hasn't had the best start, but now he's starting to pick things up. This is all about confidence, I think, ultimately, and cleaning up the fundamentals. Yeah, may not have had the best start, but what a finish Jeez. he had. I mean, I'll expand the conversation out to my two analysts now because this is, this is the cryo we were waiting for. This is the cryo we were promised. Yeah, I think the whole community expected to see something like this last game, Dan. And I guess, could you speak to... Is this, is this what's happening in scrims for you guys? Because this is what everyone thought, right? Cryo, just this dominant player on the AWP, playing Jet, and just didn't really play, play out that way. But this is a map where it felt like I was back in 2022. <laughs> Yeah, this this is the kind of performance we like. Well, this is yeah, this is what you see in a scrim. This is what you see with Cryo when you see him historically in his career. It's not been a super long career for Cryo just yet. He's a young player, but this is what we expect. And I think one thing that's really interesting about Cryo, and I know we've had lots of discussion uh, publicly about his roles and you know what we might be looking to do with him. He's not necessarily the the, the classic mega aggressive you know Durka type jet that you throw at people's faces. Like he is a jet. I mean, let's look at him with his best results in his career. It's on chamber. It's it's a similar. You're 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 playing the operator, but you're a bit more passive, and that's kind of his style. So, with that, there's a lot of other opportunities to have him perform really well with the with the team we saw in split. When you have, you know, let's say you got Asana running in for you, creating the space, you know, calming, you know, giving the direction. Now the has got some room to work, so Sage becomes like a really good agent. And there's other agents that he can play and that we want to develop him into, mm -hmm. where he's really going to shine. Yeah. Can you talk about map number one in this series, though? Because, well, in the last two maps, I think we saw the game plan start to come together. You guys managed to come back and win that. But map number one, it seemed like a lot of the same issues on Ascent that we were seeing in the game last week, where the mid-rounds on the attacking side are, are getting a little rough, and then these gaps are just being left that Crew constantly was able to exploit. Yeah, I do. I do. It does feel like we're a little bit predictable, and I think some of the fundamentals 
with that map we've had, we've had struggles with. And I think I think it's one of those maps where we have to kind of go back to the drawing board a little bit. That's the feeling I get. I don't know how Coach Mike feels just yet because you know, we haven't had that debrief conversation. But it, it, it's, it's a weird one. There's always like these maps that are trickier for, for a, a team like, you know, Sean, we, <laughs> I think it, it, feels, too. it feels like the same situation we had last year when Sean was the head coach. Yeah. It's like, it looks good in scrims. Yes. And, and, you know, we have like pretty good results in scrims with it. We're not, it doesn't look like this. However, in matches, it doesn't quite convert. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, real quick before I let you go, I just want to get a sense from you about how you feel like uh, this, this plays into the trajectory of 100 Thieves over the course of the season and what we can look forward to with the remaining five matches. Yeah, I think I think the the team, as I mentioned, building confidence is, is a big uh, will be a big help. I think for the team, you know, getting some wins here under the belt in Super Week to set us up. And we have a nice little uh, trajectory. We start with Crew, we go into Leviathan, mm -hmm. then we go to NLG. So I feel like the progression is nice. And I think really we just have to keep drilling the fundamentals. Everything is there already. It's just about now performance and execution. And that's why I keep going back to confidence. Because when you get on stage, when the pressure's on, the pressure starts to bear on. And if you have any cracks in your in your fundamentals, mm -hmm. it starts to show. So if we can prevent that from happening, I think. I mean, you guys see how good the good every single player on this roster is. They're all just insane. I mean, set. I'm going to keep going back to Crow. You're right. They're all insane. Keep going back to Crow. 7 0 uh, FKD. Six of those against Kesna in the final map. It was a beautiful display. The pieces are there. We saw them fit together brilliantly here in map number three. Thank you again, DDK, for joining us. With that, we're going to send it down to the stage. So Smix is standing by with Stellar for the Verizon post match interview. Thank you very much, Dash. Standing here with Stellar, the in-game leader for 100 Thieves after an amazing victory over Crew. First and foremost, congratulations. Uh, what an amazing victory here. This was definitely a must win from the side of 100 Thieves. How satisfying is it to, of course, not only walk away with the win, but to do it in the fashion that you did, coming off of a rough loss on that first map and then being down so much on that second, then coming back to winning the entire series. What's going through your head right now? Uh, I mean, first and foremost, I'm just happy we won, right? That's all we really care about at the end of the day, regardless of how we do it. Um, I'm also happy that we showed that we still have the mental fortitude, similar to the tournament at Lock-In. We had a lot of close games there. We were down a lot of rounds at Lock-In, so I'm glad that that's kind of coming back. Um, and yeah, just happy we won. We definitely saw that mental fortitude shine coming off of that loss on Ascent 13-4 and then being down 8-1 on Split. It felt like we were going to be seeing a very similar sort of scenario happen on Split, but that was not the case. After you were down 8-1, you then went on to win nine rounds in a row. Tell us, how were you able to do that and how were you able to take the team and bring them back from that sort of a, not just a score deficit, but I'm sure, of course, mental condition deficit? Right. So, I mean, I think we were doing some of the right things on split. I think we um, identified how to adapt a little late, which is kind of why you saw us start winning the rounds towards the tail end of the attack. And then we were super confident in our defense, especially knowing that, you know, or at least knowing that defense was coming up next. That kind of helped us uh, or drive us mentally and then carried on to win the map. Indeed, because then moving on to Fracture, we saw 100 Thieves absolutely shine. Cryo was playing out of his mind, completely shutting down Kesnet, getting so many first kills. It was great to see Cryo shine in that fashion. What do you think it was about the setup that allowed him to be able to do so, perhaps in a way that maybe we would have liked to see prior? I think it's just the way we've been practicing the map. I think it, he's just super comfortable now um, in, in terms of what we've been doing. We've been playing a little bit more aggressive. We've been playing a little bit more with the pack. We, we started putting um, not just one, but both of our initiators with him for some of the rounds, and that just helped support him generally and get like set up. Um, and then pretty much just told him to let loose right? and just have fun with it. And then he did. A win here is great, but I'm sure you want to keep this streak going. Up next is going to be Leviathan, obviously. A very, very strong opponent. What are your thoughts about going up against them? It'll be a tough game, but I'm just excited to play. Awesome. Thank you very much, Stellar, for taking the time for this interview. We are going to be right back. Afterwards, we have more Valorant action with Evil Geniuses taking on Furious. See you there. While there is uh, a lot of pressure on the matchup itself, you hope that crew's not feeling as much of it. Indexing into that nothing to lose mentality. The expectation heavily in the 100 Thieves camp. This squad starting on their stronger side. There's a chance here for them.
A double set up for Hell dropping down. Melton, there was a flash to accompany it! What chance the hell of that one going down? Back 26 health got to do so much in the moment. Down to that one on one. Cross to the side with a fragment. Nate needs the kill. Found and he's done it! Is it going to be spam there? Belsar rattling off the shots. There's the Lancer in sight. Wider swing, has to take a wider fight. Down to the side. They are weak. Stella manages to go away. Swing, a punish from Mike, potentially now flooding right down. The waterfall straight oh. into the sight line of Klaus. Oh. Pulls used incredibly early there. No one was tapping that spikes. Lovely flash played as the 100 Thieves trying to get proactive. Down into hell all the way forward. Every single oh. oh. That's monstrous, and that's what they need. He's in their hands. Angle watch. Nobody can stick this spike with you. Molly just at their feet, but there is a bit more utility. Right. Work through. Yeah. Double fight taken. Bang. Try and relieve some of that pressure. Spraying through. Shot. Land yeah. stands to the side. It does not matter. And 100 Thieves in a dominant fashion for map number three. A well-earned series.